Uh, we have a new application form that is going to be launched uh, probably on Monday. So on Monday you will notice that there is a new mobile app uh, update available for everybody. So download the update and this is what you're going to see. So new application form. Remember the current application form. So that's what it looks like. Why do we have a new application form? Rob, why are you changing things? I only just got used to the, new, the application form. Now you're changing it. We always change things, right? Only when there's good reason to. So we are always trying to evolve the Dewpoint system to be better, simpler, faster, to coin one of the bank's old slogans that they used to have. So let's take a look at comparison because I'm going to show you a very quick comparison. I'm going to hope that you can appreciate the difference in what we've done. So this is the current application form, right? On the mobile app. <clears throat> the page that we're looking at in particular is the product selection page. Now look at the new one. Do you see the difference? I know I'm asking you to behave like a designer now, but the designers are trying to appeal to the users, right? <clears throat> you can immediately see that it is simpler and it should be faster for people to use. The application form should be usable so that there doesn't need to be any input from the lead wealth engineer. When a person's going through the application form, they should be able to go through it clearly without going, ah, oh, I'm stuck or I don't understand this or please help me with that, right? So that is the main reason why we've changed the application form. So this morning for about 15 minutes, I'm going to go through the entire application form, right? Every single screen, we're going to go over it uh, fairly briefly because again, the screens and the layouts have been changed and updated to be self-explanatory, right? And hopefully sh this should assist everyone uh, when they are connecting new people to Dewpoint. So let's begin. <clears throat> the first question and the most important question on the application form is, welcome to, wealth, uh, to the Wealth Engineer application form. Before we start, were you introduced by anybody, right? That's the magic question that links our channels together. We don't want to forego this question. So very important question. And now you can see the layout, right? We've always got the blue heading, a title bar, and then the two buttons are generally at the bottom to proceed or to go back or to cancel. <clears throat> if you want to get out of this completely, you just click on the black X, right? So this is the typical layout that's going to follow throughout the application form. If you click no, the dreaded no, right? It comes up and says, are you sure? Because this cannot be undone. It cannot be changed and you will not have a lead wealth engineer, right? Then they go, oh, no, that's a mistake. Go back. Then they <laughs> click, yes, yes, I was. I was introduced by somebody, right? A stranger on Facebook. No, not a stranger on Facebook. Someone who called me personally. All right. So who introduced you to Dewpoint? Put in their wealth engineer number. You put in the wealth engineer number, you click next. It comes up and it confirms that wealth engineer number with you. Currently it does that, right? You can verify that wealth engineer number, but it's a bit weird because it shows you the first letter of the name, the last letter of the surname. It just looks strange. So we've changed it. It'll come up and say, is your introducer's name Robert? It'll give the first name, right? So we're not disclosing too many personal details. And then at the same time, it'll say, does their mobile number begin with? So you can confirm and verify that the wealth engineer number is correct. And you say, yes, please, let's proceed. Okay, now we get on to uh, probably the biggest page. So what we've tried to do is reduce any scrolling in the mobile app. We don't want people to scroll. But unfortunately, there's a little bit of scrolling that happens on one or two of the pages. One of them being the product selection page. Okay, so product selection page is basically your ability to choose which products you want. Okay, so there we go. Let me scroll it for you. In this case, they've selected Access Wealth and Wealth Guard. You see the buttons change color, right? Um, and then you've got a couple of other functionalities on this page. You've got these info buttons on each product. You've got a help button in the bottom left. Okay, so now what happens if you click on the help button? It comes up and it offers you some assistance. Right? People need, some people might not have their lead wealth engineer sitting next to them. Right? The application form has to be self-sufficient. So if they click on help, we offer them help. There's a questionnaire that allows them to judge product suitability. 
there's also more information on the particular product. So they can click on those. And then a host of other information will be offered. Um, so for example, if you clicked on Access Wealth over there, or if you clicked on the Access Wealth little info icon next to the product selection, it'll come up with all this information on Access Wealth. It comprises of two products. There's video links there. There's a lot of information that's offered through the app, uh, through the application form, so that they're better informed when they select a product. All right, so what happens if they click on select a plan? Because some of the products are just a straight selection, but we know with the funeral cover, with family wealth, there are a number of flexible options in that product, right? And you're able to access those immediately. So if you had to click on family wealth's select plan button, it comes up with this interim page. It says, well, how much cover do you want? Do you want five or ten members? We know the different options. They're very brief but they're available here, and then the price will update immediately as you select different options on that product. Okay, <clears throat> I've selected, so I've selected Access Wealth and Wealth God. I've clicked Next. It is now going to say to you, your total payment is going to be that amount. When would you like your debit orders to happen? So the process is exactly the same. When would you like your first debit order to go off? When would you like your recurring debit to go off? So you get to choose those dates and you click next again. And then it's going to give you just particular to Access Wealth because we all know the first month's debit order on Access Wealth is not the full amount. Are we all aware of that, right? The product is 324, but in the first month we only debit 224 because in the first month you're not contributing to the investment. We are setting up your investment account in the first month. And so there's no contribution that happens. The contribution only happens in the second month. So it tells people now more clearly. The previous one wasn't so clear about it. People used to phone client service and go, I was only debited this amount. They think there's a mistake, right? So it becomes a lot more explicit in this process. And then it'll confirm with you again. Please confirm the dates. It'll tell you your first debit order is going to be that amount. Your second debit order, your regular debit order is going to be that amount, right? We want everything to be explicit. One, it improves the process, right? And it also takes away from the phone calls that we get at client service, right? So it's twofold. Then you're going to click yes again once you've confirmed your debit order dates and the amounts that are being debited. And then there are a couple of terms and conditions that the user has to agree to. So the first one is due points, products, terms of use. Then we've got particular to access wealth and the investment. There's the investment um, acceptance, terms, uh, acceptance terms. Then you're going to say yes again. And then you're going to have the last one, which is um, have you completed this application of your own free will? Right? What does that mean? That means we shouldn't be doing this application form on behalf of other people. It's illegal. You can't be the one clicking yes. Yeah, they agree. I know they agree. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Let me do this for you. Let me do this for you. Yes, 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 yes. You've just broken the law seven times. Right? Don't do that. They have to fill out the application form on behalf of themselves. And don't do it because you're trying to help them. If you were trying to help them, you would allow them to do it themselves because they are going to have to assist other people going forward. If you just do it for them, then they've learned nothing in the process, right? Make sure that they do it themselves. You can stand to the side and help them as they go through the process. Okay, then yes again. <coughs> Then we get on to the requirement of personal details. Again, we've tried to split it so that there's no scrolling on any of the screens. So it's simple, right? In the current application form, sometimes there's an error or you're trying to look for something maybe you didn't fill in. Are you scrolling up and you scrolling down trying to find out where the issue is? It's going to become a lot more evident here because there's just one or two questions per page. Uh, so those are personal details, title, first name, surname, then identification. So it's all forms of identification. We all know that. Uh, your date of birth. And then finally, how do we reach you? Your email address and your mobile number. Okay, all straightforward, simple stuff. Then uh, we've got some requirements that we have to submit to the FCSA. Okay, so it's the FSCA. Um, so the first one is race, home language, marital status. Again, where we've been allowed to, we've made them buttons instead of drop downs. So instead of marital status being a drop-down, you've got to click and then scroll through the drop-down. You just go married, right? A lot easier, 
right? So improvements from a user interface point of view. Treating the customer fairly program, this is where we try to understand whether people should be taking out a product or not, right? If people are typically uh, unemployed and they have zero regular salary, we will say to them, it's probably not ideal for you to take the product. Are you sure that you want to take the product? It is going to cost you money, right? And so this is where we establish that um, on this page. Do you earn a regular income? What's your income? And this is all stuff, data that has to go back to the FSCA. Uh, then province and postal code. So we've reduced the address requirements because we're not sending you post anymore, right? And we're not going to send the sheriff to come attach your furniture because we are low risk business. <laughs> Right? So we don't need your address details. We just need to know what province you're in. The postal code will give us the suburb that you're in. That is sufficient enough. So we make the address details a lot simpler. Then next again, onto the next screen. Okay, then some of the products have beneficiary requirements. <coughs> so the personal accident cover on Access Wealth, um, Wealth Guard, you get to state your beneficiaries, right? So we will ask you. But this is a step that you can skip. They don't have to put their beneficiaries in now. Why? Because they don't always have the details of their beneficiaries. They might be missing uh, ID numbers and that type of thing. So you have the ability to skip it and you have the ability to add beneficiaries there. So you've got beneficiary one that comes up initially, right? Full name, ID number. It's pretty straightforward. We might be adding one or two uh, extra fields here. Um, it'll be dependent on regulatory aspects, but that'll be finalized uh, next week. And then you can click add another person, right? You add another person, look, your beneficiary one gets summarized into a little block. So it doesn't take up space. Then you can put beneficiary two. You can click on that to edit beneficiary one, or you can just remove it, right? So that's just the way the beneficiaries work. And that'll be the same on the funeral cover. Because on the funeral cover, you can add family members. It'll be the same process, right? Just list the family members up to five or up to ten. All right, then debit uh, debt cover. So we've got debt protection on the funeral cover. So this is what the debt protection screen is. We ask you for the credit provider number. So whoever you have an outstanding balance with, right? It could be your bond. It could be the money that you owe on your car. It could be your Edgar's account. It doesn't matter. You list it there, put in the amount of money you're owing, and you know through the funeral cover product, through uh, Family Wealth, we offer up to 10,000 rands with the debt protection upon death. All right, so that's what the debt cover screen looks like. Then we go next again. We need your bank account details, so that's very important. Who do you bank with? What's your account number? And then again, instead of a drop down, just button. Savings or check. Straightforward, right? And we verify these details to prevent errors, right? So we've got uh, the system in the background checks the account number with the bank because most banks have similar account numbers. So there's certain numbers that we can track. If there's an issue, <clears throat> and the system's not perfect, but it'll say your account details seem to be incorrect. Like it might look like a savings account instead of the check account that you selected. And we will ask in that case, and only in that case where we pick up an error, we'll say, are you sure? Are you sure? The amount of people that put in incorrect banking details will shock you. Whether they do it purposely or not is another question, right? But it'll shock you. It's something that we want to get on top of. And that's why we've got this process in place. But again, we've tried to make it simpler. All right. And then finally, do you confirm that this bank account is in your name? Okay, so that's tricky. That's a tricky one because we've got all these questions about, um, I'm paying it for somebody else, right? As long as the bank account details are in your name. You understand? Okay, so this is confirmation. Again, it can't be you doing something for somebody else. The bank account details that we're debiting because the debit order authority that you agreed to must be accepted by you and the account must be in your name. Okay. <clears throat> then we click yes, I agree. Do you authorize two point to debit your bank account? So that's the debit order authorization. Okay. Then we've got do you finally agree to due points code of conduct. The code of conduct. The fine print that no one reads. Who's read their code of conduct? Are you all lying to me? I haven't even read the code of conduct. 
No, no, I read the Code of Conduct <laughs> a couple of times. Okay, um, so those are the two agreements that you have to agree to. And then finally, you're done, right? Congratulations, you're a wealth engineer. So there's a couple of things we've added in here. We tell them your unique wealth engineer number and password will be SMS and emailed to you. Make sure you download the Google app, I mean the Dewpoint app, so you can click on the two available platforms there. And then make sure you subscribe to our social media channels. So we've got a link to YouTube and Facebook and you're done.